teaching practices that have a high impact. Well, for me, I teach law, and that means uh, trying to create circumstances that mimic as much as possible what students will have to do as they apply their legal knowledge in their future practice as lawyers. The high teaching practices that I primarily use, well, there's at least two I can talk about today. Um, one of them is taking students outside of the classroom. So what we call outdoor legal education. This is not something we typically do in law, but I was inspired by a uh, speech of one of the leading scholars in indigenous law who came to talk here at Windsor Law in 2015 about the merits of taking students outside of their comfort zone in the classroom. And uh, so I've used this in my copyright law class where I've taken my students to the museum twice, uh, uh, namely the Art Gallery of Windsor. And this year I'm taking uh, my students in my copyright law class to meet the students in the Faculty of Cinema, uh, graduate students who will talk about their creative process as they are making films and engage my students to think about what are the possible legal issues revolved around that. So these, I think, high impact teaching practices help students in many ways. So if, if I take the example of outdoor legal education, it, uh, it's basically an active learning experience as opposed to a more passive experience that happens you know, when you're listening to the professor giving a lecture. Uh, it forces students to contextualize the legal concept that they learn in class. So what they have to do when, when I take them outside of the classroom, for example, taking them to the museum, means that they have to listen and pay attention to, for instance, the curator. As the curator of the museum is walking them through their daily lives and explaining what are, you know, what, what, what are the issues that they are confronted with. So one of the, the issues uh, could be, so how are museums dealing with copyright law and how could they constrain so their role of actually making art accessible to the public? So a typical example is uh, prohibitions to take photographs in a museum. Um, so how does that sort of go against social trends and norms of people who love to take selfies in front of art pieces. So that these are the, the issues that, that contextualize what we learn in class about copyright law, what is copyright law infringement. Um, so for students, it also forces them to sort out what is relevant from not, what is not relevant and what they will hear from a, a person, which actually could be a future client, explaining them, you know, the issues that they go through. So they really have to make exercise that judgment and skill to sort out what is important and what is not, as they will need to apply their legal knowledge. And then uh, it engages students to reflect on their experience, so they can do that in different ways. The way I use is that I ask students to write an assignment uh, after their experience, either write a legal memo about what are the best practices that a museum should adopt, for example, uh, or reflect on an art piece that they saw in the museum that sort of raises various copyright issues uh, that could be of interest. And so it's very much about learning by doing. Uh, and I really believe that in this moment, they have to become a council. They have to become what they will be in the future. Uh, and I think there's something empowering in that, in, in that sort of experience. Yeah, there are a few lessons I've learned from these, these experiences, these teaching practices, and I take again the example of outdoor legal education. And one of them is sort of the, the value of the uncontrolled environment that it brings you to, as opposed to the more controlled environment of a classroom. And that brings an element of surprise. And I think there's a lot of value in that element of surprise. Um, I'll give you one example again about the museum. So one of the years I took my students to the museum, there was an exhibit by the artist Wafa Bilal, and this was in 2016 called The Ashes Series, Dark Palace. And this exhibit was about photos by the artists exhibiting uh, ruins of Baghdad after the U.S. invasion in Iraq. Uh, and actually, when the curator was extremely knowledgeable about the exhibit and about the art process of the, of the artist, started explaining to the students what these photos were. These photos actually were not actual photos of the room. They were photos of miniature reproductions of photos that had been taken from the wire during the war that the artists, like, would in an extreme degree of precision, reproduced 
uh, using even human ashes uh, as part of his, his photos. And when the, uh, the curator explained that to the students, I could, we could have heard a pin drop in the museum, in the, in the room where we were. Uh, I think their jaws were, were dropping, and so was mine. Actually, I didn't expect this. I didn't know as much about the, the, crea the creative process of the artist. And for us, as them as future lawyers and, and me as a law professors, immediately it raised a, a whole slew of copyright issues. But not only that, beyond raising issues at the legal level, I think it engaged the students emotionally, also physically in being in a museum, in addition to being engaged intellectually. So I think this is another, uh, you know, a, a lesson learned for me of the value of, um, you know, these different teaching practices than in the, the classroom. Um, and I think it's great when such learning moments happen. It's great for the students and it's great for the instructor. You know, I'm really, I, I, I cherish those moments.